Okay, X-Traders, and we are going to take a look at a sample trading week. So once you've you know, taken all the courses that you can take and watched all the videos that you need to pick up on all the different aspects of stock options trading, you should come up with your own strategy. And your own strategy includes a workflow. So we are going to look over my workflow. So four steps. Okay, some of them a little bit more involved than the others. Let's jump right in to step number one, which is analyze the market. And this is for the trading week that is upcoming. So I usually do this Saturday and then update Sunday. So analyze the market. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's go over to you know Trading View or Thinkorswim or whatever tool you use, and let's jump in and analyze the market. Let's start off. Let's say going to move over here and look at SPY. Now you could look at different indicators or SPX. Okay, uh, You could also look at, for example, the uh, NASDAQ if you want to uh, go ahead and take a look at that. This is the NASDAQ 100 and you could also do the Dow Jones, right? PJX, there we go. Okay, now depending on what type of stocks you might want to be trading in, you, you might want to look at a more broad index such as the SPX or the uh, more industrial 30 stocks in the Dow Jones, or you might want to look at the tech heavy NASDAQ. Okay, so depending on the type of stocks that you're going to be trading, depending on if they're more of uh, a broader index kind of stock or a tech stock then you will analyze the particular market that you're interested in. Now in this case we're going to take a look at the uh, SPX. So let's go ahead and maximize this here so that we can take a look at the SPX. So I'm going to maximize this cell and all right let's do a quick overview. It does look like overall and this is the daily overall it seems to be on an uptrend but it just recently finished off its downtrend. Let's see if we can get this low here and probably, yep, that's a little bit steep, but there we go. Okay, so that's an overall uptrend over the past well, couple of years, well, year and a couple of months. But as you can clearly see, it had been on a downtrend all the way from its highs here in July, which it recently broke, as a matter of fact, which was right there. Okay, and there is the breakout right there and the retest of that breakout and then the continued move upwards. So the market does seem to be in a recent uptrend and this is trend right there as you can clearly see so it does seem to have recently broken out okay and if you want to go ahead and throw on some Fibonacci would be helpful here I believe so let's go from the low of 3764 somewhere around there to the high of 4607 more or less so that's more or less the level so we seem to have broken above not only this uh, downtrend we broke out but it also seems that we have taken this 23 6 23 spot 6 uh, pullback here from the high so this seems to be a pretty interesting level and we seem to have cleared that and we are moving up so the market is looking kind of bullish now this is November 15th take in mind that we had just had uh, have just had some very good news on many fronts uh, economic as well as even political today geopolitical so this is uh, looking kind of good all right so what we do here is we come back to our presentation and I'm going to put in here okay SPX bullish okay so that is my sentiment for the SPX now of course if you want to go ahead and look at other ones because you are more interested in that kind of stock then you could also look of course in the uh, Dow Jones and the Nasdaq like we mentioned as well as the Russell uh, which includes a smaller caps. Okay, so basically we come up with an overall market sentiment, which I would say is pretty bullish, right? Not only that, but if you look at seasonal data, you will usually see that October is a pretty bullish month. 
we could quickly jump over to a tab here and look for Season Axe. So there is the seasonality, for example, for the month of October, as well as November. It's usually pretty high, and it ends in it ends the market rally near the month of December. Okay, so let's go back to our guideline here, and we've looked at the indices, right? Let's say that we're only going to focus on the SPX right now, and we're going to look at the SP sectors, right? So we come over here to our sectors chart, and we look at all of our sectors, and we look at which one is looking better or more bullish. So here, the lines here, the 50 is the red, and the 200 is the yellow. So as you can clearly see, we're jumping above the 50 here. Okay, we're still below the 200. We're below both of them. We are above both of them on the IXM materials. Great, great sector. We are about above both of them on the IXI, as well as on the IXT and IXY. This one we're below, and the IXR we're barely making it as well. With the IXB, we're above, above well, one, mostly two. But these are the most bullish ones right here, right? The IXY, the IXI, the IXT, and the IXM. So those are the sectors that are moving in the more bullish manner. So we want to make sure that we capture these in our analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in here a second data point, which is going to be IXM, IXY, IXI. I believe it was IXT. Yep. And this should have been a comma. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay, so those are our most bullish sectors in the S&P 500. Now, we will go ahead and look at the economic calendar because the upcoming week must have some sort of economic calendar news. So I use Trading Economics Calendar, okay? And there's a whole bunch of different sites that have these. And you can filter these out by countries, of course. I will keep, of course... Also, today is Wednesday, so I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So let's just go ahead and imagine, okay, so if we would have done this this previous weekend, we would have seen that for Wednesday, November 15th, go to the U.S. flags, U.S. stock market, we have MBAs, which are mortgage apps. We have retail sales, big, big number right here. We also have uh, CPI uh, was already reported, and this is the PPI. So we have PPI. So the most important information from here is probably, let's jump over to our analysis here. We've got PPI, retail sales, which will give us a very good idea of the state of the economy, if you will. And I believe we had some jobless claims, of course. But I thought there was another interest. Oh, the oil. Yeah. Okay. So there was some oil. Um, uh, inventories okay it's just in case you are interested in the oil trade okay so those that's some data coming up so let's go ahead and move over to the outlets so we have different outlets that we can look information up on and of course there is a cnn.com uh, which you know depending or regardless actually of your particular preference it has important information that moves markets whether you agree with them or not Biden having a constructive meeting with Xi is market uh, important or market significant, if you will. Now, there's also uh, one that I use a lot, which is Finance Yahoo. This is, of course, business-specific information, and there's a whole bunch of outlets here, right? But they can give you a lot of information on particular companies that they might uh, be interviewing, right? Uh, Delta being uh, upbeat about international travel is a good thing. Of course, that relates to Boeing, so that's also a good thing. And, of course, Bloomberg. Uh, I actually watch this more on TV, but they have a, a lot of uh, uh, interesting information because they also cover the Asia Open, which is very important because it leads up to our Open the next day. So right now, which is actually uh, 8.40 in the, in the evening, Asia is already open. For their trading day so sometimes information that comes out during the asia open comes and impacts us on the next trading day so 
look at the media outlets, get an, you know, get a feel for what's going on, and uh, you know, plot down, plot down anything that you see. So let's say that we, you know, we talk about um, airlines and uh, you know, air manufacturer, airline manufacturers, Boeing or something like that, right? Okay, and we have a general market sentiment of what might be working uh, to the bullish side and to the bear side. So then we come over and we look at scanners, okay? Now there's a whole bunch of different scanners that we can look at. And I'm going to come over here to the Market Watch tab, go to Quotes, and see if we can find. Actually, let me, sorry, let me jump over to Scans, and here we go. So you can have your scans uh, ready and made up. This one, for example, is, the, uh, is a Power Trend scan. Okay, so you go ahead and hit Scan. And we're looking in the all stocks, okay? So that's pretty big, and we're getting 59 of them back. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to pick out something like uh, FTAI Aviation. All right, okay? So it's trading at 42. It was up 2% today, and it's trading 769,000 shares a day. All right, let's go back. And what we're going to look at now is so we can pick out the different stocks based on whatever um, interests us. So in this case, I was looking at airlines. If we were more interested in stocks, let's say, in the NASDAQ for a particular reason, then we might want to scan for NASDAQ stocks, right? Growth stocks. Uh, so FTAI, move over here to charts. FTAI, all right, you can punch that in, all right. That also is, of course, on a big up move. All right. Right there. All right. So let's go ahead and actually maximize this so that we can look at FTAI and some of its levels. Okay. So we're looking at July 24th all the way to November. Let's see if we can get some more time in here. Okay. Yeah. So this is on a pretty big uptrend <laughs> pretty much the whole year. And let's go ahead and get some levels. So we have the low and the high. Let's get our fibs on here. It did some sort of consolidation right here. We can draw a channel right there. Right there. From here. All right. To there. There's that little channel where it consolidated, and then it broke above that, and it made this new high, actually, today, 43.01. Yep. So it's all-time high is today. All right. And in this case, what we would do, it would, we would bring out the Fib extensions. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and bring in Fib extensions, which are right here. Okay. So we'll do this low to that high to that low right there all right so it seems that we might be bumping up against this level which could be a resistance let me zoom in on this okay so we seem to be hitting this level which might be a resistance and then the next level uh, up might be, which would be the one, the 61.8 above the 100, would be this 48.79. So this is looking pretty bullish. If we manage to sort of, of get another, this is not a bullish engulfing, no. So if we manage to get another level above here, I would definitely be looking at uh, possibly taking calls. We can see the RSI though, however, is telling us that it is quite overbought. Let me zoom out of this, right, so that it is quite overbought. So we might actually be looking, and you can see that there was a, uh, a little bit of a rejection here, not such as a bullish candle right there. So we could actually be getting ready to move down towards the top of this channel, okay? So we might want to wait for a back test of this channel, which would also coincide with the back test of this trend line, and then we might be ready to move back up. So that would be the beginning of our trade plan, so to speak. So we have chosen uh, the, we have picked the ticker that we wanted, we charted it, we looked at support resistance, we looked at some trends, and we've already 
established that the, that the SPX, uh, the SP sectors uh, such as uh, materials and transports are uh, on the more bullish side of things. So this would definitely be uh, one of the actors that I might be looking into. So how do we get started? Okay, now let's take a closer look at the 184 hour and see what we can find. All right, there we go. So there's that channel, a little bit better look at that uh, sideways trending channel right here and how it broke up above that. And uh, this could either go, this could go uh, one of two ways. This could either break, break higher or it could head back down to this channel and test the upper uh, the upper trend line or the upper uh, support resistance line of that channel. So what are we going to do here? What's our play? What's our move? Let's look at the 20 uh, day, one hour. Okay. And what I would do here is I would use these lines, these price level lines. So this would be the 4301 right there. And remember, if you don't quite get it, then you can also right click and just edit properties and then go to 43 and just type in the 01, right? Just okay, okay. So if it breaks above that, that could be a play. And if it breaks below, there seems to be another smaller sideways trending, trending channel here, so to speak. Uh, but this was only one day, so that's not that valid. This one, as you can clearly see, is spanned quite a few days. So I would use this level okay, as my entry to the downside. So here's my entry to the upside and here's my entry to the downside. Entry to the downside, if it breaks this, the uh, I would be looking at taking profits possibly at that 50 SMA and definitely at the bottom of this channel. So I would just type that in like that and I would probably change the style just so that I know let me edit the properties on this price level. I would probably change the style just so that I know that that's actually not an entry line, but a target line, okay? And again, and this is an entry line, and the target line was at 4870 something, 4879. That would be the first one. I would probably put something right smack in the middle of that just so that I don't use that uh, level. It's too far off. I would probably put something uh, in the middle, right, as one of my, let me get it right there. Okay, and edit properties and change that just to the style so that I know that that would be a target. Okay, so that would be my play to the upside and uh, this would be my play to the downside. Okay, and once you have that trading plan uh, developed, then you could go ahead and start thinking about, okay, if I go in on one contract, if it breaks up above this line, then I might, uh, I might go in with one contract and then halfway I might get a second contract if it's still bullish and then ride and then drop off the first one here at my first target and then leave a runner for this next level and the same thing to the downside. If I break down below this level then I would definitely get a put contract in this case which would take me down to about here or possibly the 78.6 line which by then would probably meet up with this 50 SMA. Okay, and that would be uh, my chance to get into a second contract and then drop off one of them right here and ride the second one or the runner down to the 61.8 line. I might even, if I'm, you know, if I'm feeling good enough, then I would uh, probably hold off a third contract for this trend line, all right, which also happens to be coinciding with its 200 SMA down below. So that would be a sample trading week, how I would look at the market, the sectors, the media outlets, let me go back here, the different uh, economic information uh, coming out this week. Of course, economic information also means, or economic calendar also includes earnings reports, which we are in the middle of right now. Once you do this for a few weeks in a row, and you go back and you understand what happened that made the trade go in your favor and what happened that made the trade go against you or, you know, better said, what happened that your trade plan didn't pan out the way you expected it to, then you'll be in a position to really understand what's going on and then start, you know, increasing the amount of money that you put into individual trades. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. Drop some comments in the comment section down below 
And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.